India is a land of innovation and progress, where technology and modernity are joining forces to make life easier for its 1.4 billion inhabitants. Nowhere is this more evident than in the realm of digital payments. The future looks bright, I would say, and uh, the India's digital payment landscape is is growing at a significant pace. UPI clocks around seven and a half billion transactions per month, and these are volumes that we've not seen in any other market. Real-time payments have revolutionized the way money is sent and received in India, like nowhere else in the world. Not only are payments faster and more secure, but they've also enabled new business models and opened doors to countless opportunities. It has touched the every aspect of life of people of the country. People need not dare carry cash while stepping out to buy anything. Just so smartphone is good enough to make these kind of purchases. So India is by far the biggest real-time payments market in the Miasa region and in fact worldwide with 89 billion real-time payment transactions in 2022. That's expected to grow to 235 billion in 2027. India's real-time payments transaction volume was 6.5 times the size of the US, Canada, the UK, France and Germany combined. It's over three times that of China, home to the second largest real-time payments market. Real-time payments here are made via India's Unified Payments Interface, or UPI, a system owned by the National Payments Corporation of India. India's real-time payment story has been quite inspiring and uh, the growth that we have seen since 2016 is astronomical and there are several factors contributing to the growth. I would say the, the journey started off with a vision, vision of the Indian government to achieve a cashless economy, to democratize payments and also to drive digital uh, payment inclusion. As a result, the unbanked were banked and today 80% of uh, the Indian population have access to a bank account and uh, having a bank account is a prerequisite to using UPI. The Indian government laid the foundation for the introduction of UPI well in advance with the establishment of three key pillars known as JAM. The primary driver for the success of UPI has been the vision of Government of India to achieve its objective of financial inclusion. Towards this end, Government of India set up the base infrastructure on three pillars which they referred as JAM. Opening a zero balance, no frill account for the marginalized section of the society called Jandan campaign. Eliminate the leakages in direct beneficiary transfer by leveraging the Aadhaar based technology for authentication to get the money in the hands of the people using the mobile payment technology. Having high mobile phone penetration proved a critical part of the equation, instantly providing access to the UPI system to a large part of the population. It was a perfect fit between technology and the Indian society. The payment through mobile is not only quick and secure, but also improves the quality of the last mile service delivery. Once the JAM infrastructure was in place, the government of India leveraged the increasing popularity of smartphones and the internet availability in the remotest corners of the country to launch the low value real time mechanism called UPI. Mobile wallets are key to the instant success of UPI. With a large portion of the population having access to the technology, even if they weren't currently using it, there was no significant technological barrier to adoption to be overcome. All the elements were in place for rapid adoption. A lot of this is linked to the confluence around mobile payments. So UPI, the Indian real-time payment system, is very closely linked to all the mobile wallets that are available in the market, of which Night, over 90% of consumers in India have access to. Mobile payments is the way to pay outside of cash in India. With the cornerstones in place, universal bank accounts, a digital-friendly national ID scheme, widening internet access and increasing adoption of smartphones, the stage was set for the next phase of the transformation. I would say the landmark moment was uh, in 2018 when uh, the Central Bank of India introduced um, and allowed uh, fintech players to uh, come into the ecosystem and uh, you know, completely reshape uh, the payment landscape. Uh, so as a result, you know, the top three fintechs, which is uh, Google Pay, Phone Pay, Paytm, uh, they constitute around 94% of the overall UPI market share. 
With central government actively reaching out and including fintechs in the initial development phase of UPI, the sector sees the opportunity to carve a niche and compete on an equal playing field with the larger banks. This democratization has brought substantial benefits to the industry, to all participants, through the introduction of more innovative solutions from a new breed of providers. Country didn't just make banks push this particular product, but also got the PSP providers and our private players and fintechs also involved in the entire journey of UPI. The fintechs and the tier three banks in India have come up in a large way. In the last two years, starting 2020, we are seeing that the journey has started and now they are giving a tremendous competition to the tier one banks. If the trend continues and at this pace, by 2026, they are likely to get the 50% of the transaction volumes of the country. As we have seen with other developing markets, the high historical reliance on cash and the need to move away from it has been instrumental in India's tilt towards real-time payments. Part of the reason for the continued strength of the Indian real-time payments market is due to the fact that we're again talking about a heavy cash market historically. Cash has historically been 45% of total transactions, and we're seeing that likely to fall to around 22% in 2027, while real-time goes to 67% of total transactions in 2027. Again, as we have seen in other similar markets like Latin America, replacing cash with digital alternatives has provided a springboard for the growth of real-time payments, providing a solution to a problem and not simply a gradual evolution of existing technology. The process in India started in 2016 with the surprise demonetization campaign, but was accelerated by the arrival of the pandemic. So again, rather than replacing another form of electronic payments, we're talking about a market where really a lot of the growth comes from reducing cash. That's not something that is as doable in developed markets, um, with a few exceptions. Elsewhere in the transaction chain, small merchants, the backbone of the Indian economy, are also reaping dividends by plugging into the real-time payments infrastructure, opening up new sales opportunities and reducing their cost of doing business. It's not just about uh, the existing use cases, but uh, this fintech community is actually bringing in innovative services both for the consumer consumers through their mobile apps and they're also solving for the merchant side of the ecosystem they, through you know simple uh, payment acceptance either through QR codes or mobile numbers which is way less uh, uh, you know expensive uh, versus the traditional modes like POS. Small merchants operating in a very thin margin have become more receptive and open to accept the digital payments as their earning margins are not impacted as there are no MDR associated as was in the case of card payments. As there has been a considerable investment by the payments industry in the success of UPI and the real-time payments infrastructure in India, one key question is how banks can create a return on investment in a system that is designed to drive down charging and therefore revenue. With UPI, banks can acquire customers at a much lower cost versus the traditional uh, ways of onboarding customers. So they are able to acquire customers on third-party channel, which is cost-effective, and they also get the opportunity to cross-sell and upsell other revenue-generating products, like whether it's uh, loan products, insurance products, and. Uh, for fintechs, they are investing heavily in attracting and retaining uh, customers on the UPI platform, so the bank could actually benefit from this investment. Looking beyond just the experience of the domestic market, for India, like many countries with a large expat population, the launch of a real-time payments option is destined to deliver extremely valuable benefits to India's economy through cross-border payments and, crucially, remittances. I would expect a lot many use cases coming in that has uh, the potential to expand from domestic payments uh, to cross-border payments. When I talk about cross-border, it's not just about um, cross-border acceptance of UPI, but also remittance emerging as a critical use case. Cross-border payments are becoming much more reality with all the uh, foreign inward remittance and foreign outward remittance on UPI rails, which is going to give you a lot of convenience for the people who want to transfer funds to India or transfer funds out of India, it will be much more simplified and at the very low cost for them.